Hello again, it's me, Milton, with the Milton channel. Have I got a little bit of a special thing for you? And this is what we're going to be going on about today then. The Easy Cut 12. 12 volt, 2.5 amp. Spins at 1100 RPM. It will cut through 65 millimeters of wood and it only weighs 0 0.9 kilograms. Well, now, first of all, there is a safety issue. This is, after all, a little bit of a chainsaw. So we must remember and be careful and wear safety gear at all times. In that case, then I might as well stop the video now because I haven't got the safety gear to go with this. So, I'll tell you what, I'll just take the chance and go for it. So, uh, wait. Bit of, oh yeah, a bit of glue still on the side of the box there, I'm just getting rid of it. Right, so then, what do I think of this and why did I buy it? I bought this for a few reasons, right, which I'll explain as we're going along, why? But I must admit, I did see somebody on, made a video on this, he tore it all down and everything, so we will not be doing the type of thing what he does. So, let's get it open, let's have a look inside, right. Yep. Right, get rid of that. Right, what's all this here? All this stuff. All the clingy on stuff. Right. This. This stuff here. Right. What's this stuff? Well, apart from that, it says you've not to do that weight there. Which means, obviously, you've not to probably try sticking it on the side of something. You have to stick it all the way in. Okay, cool. Right. Where are they? Right, next. Right, next problem. Where does the fuel go in it? I mean, it's got a fuel light there, fuel gauge. So, where does the fuel go? Can't seem to find it anywhere. Battery. Ah, right, got ya. Right, it's got an electronic start on it, hasn't it? That's what it is. But, where does the fuel go? This got me baffled. Okay, guys, sussed out. Now I know how it works. We'll just remove this little plastic thing off here, right? Gotcha, right. Pretty cool, let's give it a quick spin and test, eh? Oh, variable speed on the trigger, too. Wow, that looks pretty evil. Right, okay. Pull the battery out of this just now and have a closer look at this. Remember, there's one thing we're not we won't be doing with this is doing what that nice Canadian bloke did. Yeah. What was that? Ah! Ah! Call me an ambulance! Get an ambulance! No, we won't be doing things like that. But anyway, after watching this, this kind of inspired me on to do other things. What I wondered was, what would happen if this blade did meet some flesh? So, I thought, well, yeah, and as we ordered quite a few things off Amazon, there is always a lot of cardboard to be tore up and put in. I mean, we had an incident a while back, whereas we let it build up and we were going to burn it all in one shot. But unfortunately, we had to stop that because my neighbours complained about the amount of smoke that we were putting out. Now, we're entitled to have fires in the backyards. We can burn wood and we can burn cardboard. As long as it's not uh, poisonous stuff we're burning, like plastics. But as I said, the neighbours complained about the smoke because it was getting on to their wash and everything. So we decided we'll keep the peace. We won't annoy them. We won't do it. Cardboard built up. We spent all morning, one morning, ripping up all the cardboard. We filled up the recycling center. We filled up my bins outside. So really and truly, it became a pain in the butt. So I thought, well, if this thing can rip through cardboard the way it was ripping through cardboard, it'll do the job. We did try using a reciprocator, so, but that didn't work. So anyway, flesh, cardboard, and a bit of plastic. Plastic is to improve a machine, but that I'll show you that later. So anyway, let's go into the kitchen and find out what harms when this meets flesh. 
So okay then, here we have a little bit of chicken fillet. And out. <sighs> Awkward. Oops. Ah, this is... I can see why they say don't do that. It jumps about a bit. Right. Now, this piece of chicken here gave its life willingly for this experiment. Okay then? Alright. See what happens. Whoa. No problem. Straight through. Wow. Right, let's flick it over then, see what we've got. Right, we've got this here. Okay, I'll bring you in for a closer look as we come through on this one. What do you think? Right, here it goes. Wow, a bit more, eh? Uh. No problem, eh? Almost grinding up the old board there, too. Right, okay then. Now you see, it's okay doing this and mincing up a bit of chicken like, right? But the problem is with the human bone, the human body, sorry, it has bones in it. So really we gotta try this experiment with a better bone. Okay then, now we have a bit of chicken, we have a bit of bone on it. So let's go for it. Look at that, straight through, wow, this thing's evil, yeah. there we go, straight through it, uh, I think I'll just bring you in a bit here for a bit more of a closer look, eh? Makes a real mess of that, don't it? Yeah. Okay, some of you might think I'm just being a bit stupid. But let's face it, it cut through that bone, pretty no problem at all. The problem is this bottom bit just here, it just wants to bounce about a bit like, I mean, I haven't got it really hold, get it hold very stable, I must admit. What we'll do is we'll um, kind of maybe just give that bit to the dog, I think, like. No, we can't. It's got bone in it. Dog's not allowed bone. Right then. So, okay, it gone through chicken, meat and chicken bone pretty successfully. So, how does it cope with a bit tougher meat? Okay, let's go and find out. Well, here we have Sunday night roast. So let's see what it can do. Well, that's not much cut for taking the fat off. Will it cut the meat? Yeah, yeah cut the fat. Wow! Hey, hey, hey! Success! He does that! <laughs> right! So, can we cut it a bit smaller, do you think? Oh, well, first lamy, <laughs> hit the fork. Well, it's doing okay here, I must admit. Yeah, you could, you could chop it up a little bit with this, I must admit. A daft line. Oh, it smells nice. There we go. No problem at all. Right, we've done the line. What else? Tomato. 
Luckily, I have one here that I prepared earlier. Okay, then you ready? Stick it in. Here she goes. Yeah. There you go, you see? Who needs all them fancy kitchen knives? All you need is one of these damn things. Brilliant! Just one more test, I think. How's it gonna cut cheese? Ah. Okay then, here we have a perfectly good block of cheese. Let's go try it out. There it is, absolutely perfect. No problem at all. I'll just see if I can angle it in a bit here to show you that again. There you are. Now, even cut through cheese. Cool, right then. Now, there is kind of a serious side to this. Alexa, define chainsaw. Chainsaw is usually defined as portable power saw, teeth linked to form an endless chain. Right. Alexa, define nano. Nano is usually defined as the nanotechnology industry, or a product of such industry. Hmm. Uh, no, no. Huh? No, no. That's the way it was. Okay then. Fine. Now we got to go and cut some wood now. Okay. Now we're in the cellar. Now we got a piece of wood here to saw. Let's see. We still got a bit of chicken and cheese and pork on there and yeah, tomato and that lime thing. Right. Let's get on with this. Right. Okay, so I'll never make a lumberjack. Well, to be honest, we. No, that impressed, wait, to be honest. We'll try maybe a long ways cutting it. We'll see how we go on that way. Oh, it work. Okay, here goes the next cut. See what we can do with this. Impressed with the wood cutting capabilities of it. Okay then. So a wood bit of a failure. Let's see what it's like at cutting up some cardboard. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Just what the doctor ordered. Yep. Perfect. So now we can really cut with cardboard 
up any small bits and pieces. Perfect. So we'll be fighting over who's going to use it to cut the cardboard up. What do you think? <laughs> Now for this last test, I'm going to cut away a bit of plastic off of here. See what you see? There. Come on this side, you won't be able to see it. But uh, so I'll try and work on something for that. Is to cut this away here so I can slide wood all the way back along. Because I can't do it because this thing here is in the way. So we'll just go and we'll just go for it now, okay? Wrap it or what? Right, I'll move it probably to this side. We'll do this side now. Yeah, a bit rough now, mate. Is that done? Let's see if we can cut along here. There we go, that out of the way now, job done, perfect. Well, back upstairs again, out of that nice cold cellar. Right, go on, get away. Right, so what do I think of it? Well, for cutting chicken meat up, it's pretty wicked, I must admit, and meat in general, it'll cut it. Uh, maybe it's actually going to be more beneficial in the kitchen for cutting things up. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend you do that, like, I just wanted to see what it would do, and that's what we found out. But the problem I found was, we open this up, you got a the pointy thing there it is. Right, was, a bit closer to the camera, was all up inside here, all up inside here, actually all gummed up, we goo and everything. This is going to be the Achilles heel up in here. This is what's going to start slowing it down, and this is what's going to end up knocking up your motor inside. And of course, if we take the blade out, I'll show you again here. Round here, it was all gummed up. Same with the inside along here. It was all gummed. It took me ages to clean it. How did I clean it? I just put some hot water with some detergent in the sink and I washed it out. And then afterwards, gave it a good spray with w, uh, no WD GT85. Uh, then of course, put it in there, run it for a bit, and then gave it a spray and wiped everything back out again. That's why it's so clean actually in the inside there. It didn't take long to do it, but if you're going to be using it, that's what you're going to have to do. With it. Periodically, you're going to have to stop and you're going to have to clean it out, because if you don't, that's what all this seize up inside and all this end up knocking the motor. It's probably what happened to somebody else. Uh, I mean, for cutting cardboard, yeah. Perfect. I mean, that's just great. I mean, when I seen uh, when I seen it on the video when he, uh, he was opening the boxes, where I just went, yeah, fine, that's perfect. That's going to be great for cutting cardboard. And I was right. It will. I think we'll be fighting over where he's going to actually be cutting the cardboard up now, because it's got to be a lot quicker and a lot easier. But again, we even we cardboard it gummed up as well on the inside. And if you build up too much, it's going to start getting inside it there, and eventually it'll just start getting tight, and you'll overloading the motor I mean just pull it back oh yeah but you do get a battery charger with you do get instructions which is actually in the lid I didn't actually notice that they are there right for those people that want to read the instructions come on look put the battery in the wrong way already so if you listen to it then I had no damage no damage it's absolutely perfect you see and I was surprised when it had a variable speed trigger as well, actually. I was surprised at that. Oh God, give it body. Ooh, tight. But if I'd bought this for cutting wood, I think I'd be pretty disappointed. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not a very good woodcutter with uh, hand saws and things like this. Um, maybe if I practiced a bit more, yeah. 
Thin wood, yeah, we could imagine it would probably do that pretty quick actually, but that thickness of wood, no, go away and get something bigger for it. And if you were to use this outside for cutting branches, for pruning things like this, you got to get a lot of moisture inside there, and that is definitely going to actually start gumming it up. It might lose, seem to lubricate it, but uh, no, no. But, just pop this out now. The blade itself, so far I ain't seen the blades at 20 pounds, something like that. So it's worthwhile looking after your blades, I must admit. But how these blades are actually linked together, I don't know. They've been very discreet as Bosch. They've been very clever with this one. They didn't actually call it a chainsaw. It's not a chainsaw. And when I asked Alexa to define nano, right? She gave us a better answer the first time. It's something to do with something that's not point, not point, something of a millimeter, right? And that's why they've got it a nano blade. How this blade is joined together, I don't honestly know how. Eventually, when I get a replacement blade or have to get a replacement blade for this, what I'll do is I'll try breaking this apart and getting into it and have a look and see how it's actually joined together. Because it's linked, they could be one piece, but it's joined by a little pin to it. Is that a chain though? Or is that just something that's linked together? Don't know, can't say, can't give my opinion because I've not been inside and had a look yet. I'm just speculating. So, really and truly, it's one of these, I'm afraid to say. I mean, the blade itself does have to turn quite freely with your hand. I mean, you can press on it and push on it, it's not going to cut you, I must admit. So, I mean, it does actually move relatively easy, so, don't know. As I said, it's weird how it works. I've got a funny feeling that's what it is. It's just pieces of metal joined together with a pin and pin through it. And this is why they haven't called it a chainsaw. And if they did call it a chainsaw, can you imagine health and safety if you took this onto a building site? Why would you take it onto a building site? I don't know. But just in case you did, and health and safety seen you wait with a chainsaw, they'd have the safety pants on, they'd have the safety jacket, safety gloves, safety mask and everything like, just to use this. <laughs> no, I can see why in some ways Bosch haven't bought, brought out an industrial version of this. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you want. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments below. I'm easy going on things. And I'll see you the next time when God only knows what I'll be going on about. Okay, bye now. Okay, now we've got the fuel in here. I don't like this pool code, it doesn't seem to work very good. How are we supposed to start the bloody thing? Ugh.